Ladies and gentlemen, we move now to the cruiserweight division. Let's first welcome from England, the undefeated Ellis Zorro. Well, Ellis Zorro didn't hesitate when first offered this opportunity, which at the outset was for the world title. But he says, belts collect only dust. It might not be what the purists want to hear, he says, but he's in this only for the money. Talks about early in his career, clearing no more than 200 pounds, $250 thereabouts for some of his fights. He has a six-year-old daughter with autism, so money, he says, makes a difference, a huge difference. Here tonight means he can give her what she wants, and maybe even more to come. The dream is alive. It might be a distant dream. It's a night when he has to dare to be great. Well, this is the man who's drawn rave reviews around the boxing world. Talks about being hidden away in Australia. Australians, he says, are so often underestimated because they are so far away from much of the boxing world. But another chance to showcase his immense talents here tonight. And now let's welcome to the ring from Australia, the undefeated Chai Opataya. Well, Chris Mannix was saying there in discussion with Addy and Tony how Eddie Hearn has talked of this man one day moving up to the heavyweight division. He also has talked about moving up to the bridgeweight division sparsely populated but he says who knows he could be a three weight world champion the dominant force in the cruiserweight division as he's joined on the ring walk by his uncle still acclaimed as the number one cruiserweight in the world and there were some gushing appraisals of his work against Jordan Thompson in his most recent win, showcasing his talents to the British audience and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with 12 rounds scheduled in the Cruiserweight Division. Brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions. For Riyadh Season and National Events Center in association with General Entertainment Authority, GIA, Gold Star Promotions, Sella, Matchroom Boxing, and Tasman Fighters. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, Robin Smith. Timekeeper is Andrew East. Our three judges assigned, all from England, will be Steve Gray, Mark Lyson, and Kevin Parker. Our referee in charge will be John Latham of England. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he comes to the ring wearing white with black and weighed in officially at 199 and a half pounds. Coming to us 
from Bromley, Kent, England. He brings an undefeated record with 17 wins. Seven of his 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current WBO European Cruiserweight Champion, Ellis Zorro. And his opponent across the ring, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He comes to the ring wearing white with silver and weighed in officially at 198 and a half pounds. Hailing from Sydney, Australia, he was a 2012 Olympian and now is a professional, is undefeated with 23 wins. 18 of his 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current Ring Magazine champion and the undefeated former IBF cruiserweight champion of the world, Jai Opatayo! Right, let's what I expect from you both. You obey me instructions at all times. When I tell you to break, you both break clean. Defend yourselves at all times, and the best luck to you both. Touch gloves. So Jai Opatayo, going back to the corner, still the proud owner of the Ring Magazine belt in the Cruiserweight division, facing British opposition for the second time in a row and saying that he is nowhere near achieving what he wants to in boxing. The latest step here then against the Londoner Ellis Zorro. 12 rounds, no longer for the IBF Cruiserweight belt. Still plenty of intention, plenty of ambition in the mind of Jai Opataya. I agree with what the guys were saying in the studio about a shadow of a doubt, the best out there at the minute. A very, very good fire. He's done a footwork. Opatai always has a spring in his step that allows him to get into range and out of range very quickly. A lovely jab. Punches very hard with both hands for Zoro. He has a nice jab. My only concern with Zoro is he likes to lean out of range to miss a shot come back with counters. He has to be very careful that he doesn't lean back into a shot. Apatai is a perfect prototype of a southpaw sniper. I mean, he has, a, like you said, a beautiful bounce and a rhythm to his uh, lower body, his footwork, and that, that creates openings. You know, he doesn't always need to be fainting. It's a nice little bounce that he has from that southpaw angle that actually intimidates opponents like, like Zoro. You know, they don't know when he's going to pounce and come with a straight left hand. Yeah, that presents an added dimension of difficulty for Zorro. Already a golfing class in terms of the opponents that they've faced, but he's never been up against the southpaw in the profession. Yeah, the feints, the head movement, always moving. Has brilliant variation with that left hand. You see him there, come wide with the shot. Has to make sure that right hand's tucked higher, Zorro. The crowd sensing that that left hand from Opataya might be the precursor to something more detonating. He definitely is going to be detonating sooner or later because he alternates it from a straight left hand to the chin. He turns it around to a hook just like he did there. And he also throws it downstairs to the body. You know, so it comes from every angle and it's very dangerous at all times. Just like that. Beautiful shot. Always changing the levels with his shot, and it makes it very difficult for opponents to read his work. They have no idea where the shots are coming from. And that's because of the, the footwork. It's that's fantastic. It's, it's the footwork, it's brilliant uh, 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 lower body, the foundation of Apataya is just something special. And those shots right there, that intimidates opponents to cover up the body, and that's why he went for the home run upstairs. When you do look at that footwork, what we always talk about in the South War against the Orthodox, and there you see almost as Opatai is just nudged off balance. He placing that lead foot, the right foot, outside of the left foot of Zorro. I like where he's positioning himself, though, Zorro, in the ring. He's not getting bullied too far. Back on. Oh, big shot! Single shot, left hand. Zorro is out. Zorro is out. His head hit the canvas. That's bad news. He gave an indication of what was to come earlier in the round. And in one decisive moment, 
It's all over for Ellis Oro. The Giant. golfing class described here by one single punch as Upatia now walks over to his stricken opponent who is sitting up, being tended to by the medics here at ringside and his own corner. But that was truly devastating. Devastating and scary. That punch right there and the way that he reacted. I mean, this was an undefeated opponent who wasn't accustomed to losing in Zorro to get knocked out by one shot. One shot like that. That's brutal, that's devastating, and that's intimidating. And that's the reason this is the number one fighter at Cruiserweight. Huge power, huge shot. The variation we said with that left hand, he was targeting the body of Zorro. It's very, very hard for the Englishman to read where the shots were coming from and the, the shot that closed the show was thunderous. The way he brought his feet in. In any way, at any level, that was as clinical as it gets in this sport. This is some talent. Yeah, Jai Opataya is a bad man. The faint downstairs, the eyes, the jab to the body that doesn't come, and then the left hand upstairs. He got the reaction from Zoro, and he made sure he did not miss with that left hand. The commitment to the shot was spot on, Sergio. But the reason that punch landed is because he set that up to the belly first. The very first punch that he threw was a straight hand to the to the gut. Then he threw it upstairs to the body. Then he looped it around the guard. Wow. So he alternated that left hand. It, it totally fooled Zoro. It didn't know where it was coming, what direction. Beautiful shot. Pound for pound star there, Mike. Ringside last time, you and Tony Bellew, Darren, were purring about this man. And Sergio, you've seen him live now for the first time. Incredible. This is the number one cruiserweight on the planet. Scary pound for pound talent. This division better watch out. This is a bad, bad man in Apataya. Zorro mercifully back to his feet, even managing to smile about it as we get now the official time of that rapid finish. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 56 seconds of round number one. Your winner by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, Chai. Opatoya! Not surprisingly, Ellis Soro can't help but applaud that sensational performance by Jai Opataya. And yes, the opposition will get tougher, but he dismissed Soro with the minimum of fuss and the maximum of power. Can't promise anything as dramatic at the Riyadh Season Tennis Cup, but high quality action for sure. The first Riyadh Season Tennis Cup from December the 26th and 27th. Tennis icons, Djokovic, Alcaraz, Sabalenka, Chabur, battling it out on the zone just in a few days' time here in Riyadh. Well, we were mightily impressed. Let's get the verdict of the man himself now who's waiting to talk to Chris. Jai, congratulations. I think if you were looking for an example of your explosiveness, we just saw it in the ring right now. Was this the performance that you were looking for? Um, yeah, you know, I, I trained for 12 rounds. I was prepared for 12 rounds. And if the knockout comes, it comes. Take me through that knockout shot because it was a pretty quiet round up until that point for you when you landed that big punch? Um, yeah, he was very hesitant. You know, he wasn't engaging much, but um, he was a bit too hesitant and he got clipped. So that's just how it goes. This has been a strange week for you. You land in Saudi Arabia as the IBF champion. You step into the ring without your world title belt. Did you take some of that frustration into the ring tonight? I did, but you know, look at this place. It's beautiful, you know, I'm happy to be here, happy to perform in front of the Saudi Arabian people. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Steve. Your Excellency. Man, I'm pumped. First round knockout, I'm ready for the next fight. 
What have the last 18 months meant to you? Because you knew for a long time you had the talent to be on this level. Over the last 18 months, you've gotten bigger and better opportunities in terms of opponents and on stages like this. The last 18 months is just all part of the journey. You know what I mean? I'm here, I'm in the ring. This is all that matters. You know, that's all in the past and it's all built to where I am now. So I'm just excited to be here and I'm excited for the next step. All right, so what is that next step? Because you're unquestionably the number one guy in the cruiserweight division with or without a world title right now around your waist. Do you want to go get your old title back? Do you want a different one? What's on your mind? Man, these dudes put the people in front of me and I just knock them out. So that's what I got to do. Congratulations, John. Thank you for my time. Eddie, we're going to turn to you. He said he kind of put the onus on you there to find something for him next. What would you think of that performance? And what can you do with a guy like that? Yeah, you're talking about a, a, already, I believe, a pound-for-pound -pound talent. You know, you got a guy in Alexander Usyk that became undisputed in the cruiserweight division, moved up and became unified in the heavyweight division. I believe Jai is going to do exactly the same thing. He should be standing here as IBF world champion, but it doesn't matter because everybody knows, every fight fans know, he's the number one cruiserweight in the world. We'd love to be back here in Saudi Arabia in the first quarter of next year and win a world championship. I'd like to see him become undisputed in a cruiserweight division before he moves up to the heavyweight division, and that is inevitable. This is one of the most exciting fighters on the planet. Appreciate it, Eddie. Guys?